Welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 4, where we'll be looking at the double entry bookkeeping for credit sales and purchases. So some previous sessions have looked at the basic principles of double entry bookkeeping, including the accounting equation, and they've dealt with some transactions regarding assets, liabilities, cash sales and purchases. So this time then we're going to recap those basic principles. I'm going to test you to see if you've understood what we've learned so far and we're going to consider what double entry transactions would be needed to post both cash and credit transactions so cash transactions we've looked at before just remember that the term cash doesn't mean necessarily that cash has been received or paid it just means that things have been paid for at the time of the transaction not at a later date okay so can you work out the debit and credit entries for the following transactions. So I'm going to put these up on the screen. I'm going to suggest you pause the video and just think through what would be the debit, what would be the credit, and then we'll look at the answers. So transaction number one, owners paying £8,000 into the bank. Number two, they've received commission of £300 in cash. Number three, withdrew £100 from the bank. That was in cash. Paid wages of £50 in cash is number four. And number five, they bought a computer for £2,000 paying by cheque. So pause the video now, write down what you think the double entry is for those transactions. And then when you've finished, you can continue with the video and we'll now look at the answers. So did you get them right? So the owner pays £8,000 into the bank. The asset that is the bank account has increased. So we need to debit the bank with £8,000 and it's increased because the owner has introduced capital of £8,000, <clears> so we need to credit that capital account. Number two, then we received commission of £300 in cash. The asset that is the cash account has increased by £300, so we need to debit cash with £300 and credit commission received. So commission received, remember anything received, past tense with an ED on the end, is income, so we need to credit that income account. Withdrew £100 cash from the bank. This is slightly trickier in that we've got two assets involved. We've got an asset that is the cash account and another asset that is the bank account. So you need to think, well, which one's increased? Debit the one that's increased, credit the one that's decreased. So you've taken £100 in cash from the bank. Now, it doesn't say it's for the owner's own use. So we don't want to put it to drawings. So if you've put debit drawings, credit bank, I'll maybe allow you half a mark for that one. But what it should be is that we're taking the money from the bank. So we're going to debit the cash because we're increasing the cash account and credit the bank. OK, next one then paid wages of £50 in cash wages. We've got to record the expense that's on the debit side and we've reduced the asset that's cash. So we're going to credit cash with £50. And then the last one, <clears throat> we've bought a computer for £2,000 paying by cheque. So we've got to record the asset that is the computer. So debit the computer account. And because it's paid by cheque, you're going to credit the bank account. So debit computer, credit bank. So hopefully if you've watched my previous lessons, um, then you should have got all of those right. If you didn't, perhaps go back to lessons two and three um, and work through those again. So just a reminder about cash sales or revenue and purchases. So cash sales are where the goods are sold to the customer and payment has been received immediately, either by cash or cheque. So always debit the bank or the cash, increase the asset and credit the sales account to record the income. If we make cash purchases, it's where we bought goods for resale, we've paid for them immediately, either by cash or by cheque. So always debit purchases, that's the expense, increase that account and credit the bank or the cash to reduce the relevant asset, however you've paid for it. So the double entry then for cash sales, debit bank or cash, credit sales revenue, asset account increases, so does the income account. And for cash purchases, debit purchases, always debit purchases. That's one of our four rules of uh, double entry. See my previous lesson, lesson three for details. Debit purchases and credit bank if it's been paid by check or the cash account if it's been paid by cash. So both of those are assets that we are reducing. Net effect, as always, is zero. So think through the double entry for these transactions then. Sold £750 of goods to a customer who paid immediately in cash. We're going to debit cash, credit sales. Remember, we're always crediting sales whenever we make a sale. The only thing we need to think about is where we're debiting. Did we receive cash? Did we receive money in the bank? Bought £1,450 of purchases, paid immediately by cheque. We've always got to debit purchases whenever we make purchases. <clears throat> the choice is with the credit side of the entry. So did we pay for it through the bank account 
or did we pay for it by cash? So debit purchases, in this case, credit bank, because it's a cheque, that's how we know it's through the bank account. Sold £30 of goods to a customer who paid us immediately by cheque, or well, we've received money into the bank because the customer's given us a cheque. That's the only thing we can do with that cheque is pay it in the bank. So debit the bank, credit sales. And then if we bought £250 of purchases, paid immediately in cash, we're going to be debiting purchases and crediting cash because we've reduced that, that asset. Okay, so now on to credit sales and credit purchases. So credit sales are where goods are sold to the customer who pays at a later date. They have been allowed a credit. Now we can't just leave it until they pay us to record the sale. We need to record the sale at the time it happens, not at the time that the money changes hands. It's the same with purchases. This is where we bought goods from a supplier. They've allowed us credit and we've paid for them at a later date, so they're on credit. So if we think about what extra accounts we're going to need to set up in order to deal with transactions involving credit um, sales and credit purchases, then we're going to need to set up an account for the trade receivable in the case of credit sales. So it's whoever owes us money, they're known as a trade receivable, we'll be setting up an account in their name and we'll be debiting that rather than debiting bank or cash. At a later date, when that customer pays us, we can then debit the bank or the cash with the amount received and credit the customer's account. With purchases, it's the same, but obviously the opposite way around. So when we make purchases on credit, still debit the purchases account like we would with any other type of purchases, but we're gonna to need to set up trade payable accounts and credit those. So whoever the supplier is that's allowed us credit, we're gonna credit their account. When we do eventually pay them, at that point, we can credit the bank account debit the supplier account to wipe out the amount that we owe them. Okay, so let's think about the double entry transactions um, for these. So we sold goods on credit to A. Harris, £500. So remember, sales is always, always a credit. That's not negotiable. So we're going to always credit sales £500. The um, choices with the debit, now in this case, A. Harris hasn't actually paid us any money, so we can't put money into the bank or cash. We're going to need to set up an account for A. Harris and debit him or her. So debit A. Harris, that's a trade receivable account, and credit sales. Okay, bought goods from P. Smithers, £250. We've got a name of somebody here. It hasn't told us how we've paid for them, so we'll assume it's on credit. Remember, purchases is always a debit. So whenever you see bought goods or sold goods, we don't have an account called goods. So it's not just one general account called goods. It's either sale of goods or it's purchase of goods. So it's recorded as sales or it's recorded as purchases. So debit purchases and credit P. Smithers. It's your trade payable account with the money that you owe. A. Harris has then paid us £300 by cheque. So this is to do with presumably this sale that's been made earlier on. So if A. Harris has paid us £300 by cheque, we need to pay that money into the bank account. So you're going to debit bank and you're going to credit a. Harris. So the trade receivable balance has now been reduced. Okay, if we paid P. Smithers 250 in cash at a later date, we're going to credit the cash account because money's come out of there, and we're going to debit P. Smithers to reduce the amount that we owe to him or her. So that's the trade payable account. If we buy goods paying in cash, remember that we just debit purchases, so bought goods is purchases. Paying cash, we need to credit the cash account. So debit purchases, credit cash. And then if we sold goods for £475 and received a cheque from the customer, we're going to pay that cheque into the bank. So if we increase the bank balance, we need to debit the bank and we're going to credit sales with that amount. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a good idea of how to deal with credit transactions. I will do another um, little session on this where I look at some um, some questions and actually go through an example and show you how to record all of this in the T accounts. But hopefully by now you can distinguish between cash and credit transactions and you're going to be able to post those cash and credit transactions into the T accounts. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video um, and watch out for future posts. Thanks very much for watching.